Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. Dun, 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 dun. Here we are at really? Flipping Houses for Rookies. Dun, 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 huh? uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> See, I'm music- musically inclined too, Peter. Yeah, good, Bill. That, that's really good. <laughs> Episode number 189, you liar. Realistic and foolproof way of talking to real estate sellers confidently and painlessly. Uh-huh. 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 Realistic and foolproof way of talking to real estate sellers confidently and painlessly. You think that's possible? Yes. You do? Yes. Did you think that was possible at first? Um. Well, I had hope, of course. You but had I mean, hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you, you, how do you start out? Comfortable, relaxed, experienced? You know, you just kind of can't. There are thousands, Peter, and thousands of real estate investors who either go out of business or never get going because they never, 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 never mastered what to say to a new seller when first approaching them about mm-hmm. buying the seller's property. You mean something past how much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing to me is... These investors never think to examine their mindset and make the simple adjustments we will talk about in this podcast. Weird part is, if you do as we teach you in this podcast, your seller could have a cure for some life-threatening situation regarding real estate. And that's not an exaggeration. Life-threatening? Yeah. For this, for the real estate dude, or for the for the seller, the seller. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then I get that one. But if you don't get that, get uh, through the front door, it doesn't matter what you have to offer. They will never have a chance to hear what you have to say. Your words can set you free, and in the pretty house real estate investing game. The words you use can guarantee a tremendous lifelong income that makes stock market returns look like a bad joke. (laughs) Do you agree? Yeah, besides risk and not sure and what if and all that stuff. However, many new investors think they need to master the math side of the business, the deal structuring first, and not the human side of the business. Truth is, when you concentrate on the human side first, well, funny thing is, the math and deal structuring falls into place. Mm, No, that's true. That's totally true. But you don't know that until you're way in and you've spent a lot of money and a lot of things you didn't need to do because you were up in an ivory tower divorced from what really happens in a deal. Yeah. So let's get into the podcast so I can show you what I mean. Okay. Okay. So, um, first thing I'd like to say is is that whatever I talk about this, <clears throat> well, let's put it this way: talking about what you have to say to a customer is always unpopular because most people don't think they need it at first. Don't I know how to need do it. this. Yeah, I know they, how to do this. I know how to talk to somebody. I think they're hoping desperately they don't have to. Right. <clears throat> really, ha- don't have to. When I've done seminars on this topic, mm, mm. they're the least attended and least popular seminars I do, mm. but the guys that actually come to the seminars and actually do the role playing and and they do the work and they get used to the language, they are the ones that make the most amount of money. They're the ones that excel. Mm-hmm. So let's face the truth. Okay, let's just put the cards on the table right up front. First of all, I don't know where this podcast is going to (laughs) go. Second of all, (laughs) if you're not rich from buying pretty real estate without loans, your words are not rich enough. There's Mm -hmm. something wrong. End of story. Yep, 
Actually, end of podcast. <laughs> to next <laughs> that's, week? <laughs> that's enough right there. Yeah. What else could it be? If you're, if you're half listening to anyone like me or you, right? Anyone, pick mm-hmm. any one of them, mm-hmm. any of the big gurus. That do this, the, the that pretty do, house. That do real pretty estate. House. Yeah, that do real estate. Even just, even just the ugly houses. Anybody oh. that does real estate. Yeah, if you're half true. listening to any one of us trying to help you, meaning our listener, you aren't offering some shoddy, quality, ugly service. Now, maybe the wholesale guys that are often 30 cents and a dollar, maybe. Eh. You know, some of those guys are like overseas and they do some kind of shoddy stuff. Really? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody, but some of them. Mm. Okay, because every industry has its little, you know, little... Uh, Blurp in the corner with a dunce hat on. You know, the industry is ashamed of them, you know. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, we're not offering some some <clears throat> unreeling, unethical, <clears throat> unbeneficial product to our seller. I mean, it's just, it's just if, you, if you're half listening or even a yeah. quarter listening to what, what most people teach, it just won't be that way. Well, how could you do that? Unless somebody's so stupid to take a dumbass offer, right? I mean, are you hoping to find somebody stupid, right? Seriously, you have to. And even you. even if you do find that person, by the time you get to the closing, somebody's going to inject, you know, an attorney, a closing agent, a relative. banker, a relative. Somebody's going to inject and say, "What are you doing?" Yeah, and stop the deal, right? Yeah. So I would bet you aren't uncaring to your seller. While dealing with them, right? Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't, you don't uh, treat them like a, a a bad person or anything. I mean, I would bet that you're treating them pretty good. I, be, I would bet that your manners are in, and I would bet that you're polite, and I would mm-hmm. bet that, right? Well, I would bet a person might not even think of that when they're just looking at the big real estate profit possibility stuff. But then they show up, walk in a house, and there's a person. Right. You know, I sit at the kitchen table the, or, the, or the the couch, and they're going to talk to you. And you say, oh, this is a person. Now what do I do? Like, right. You know, maybe you want to help them. Maybe, you know. Right. Even if you don't, even if you go in and like some of my coaching clients that I'm correcting right now and give them a seminar. <laughs> And just repeat all the things that we tell you, which is not the human side of the business. Even if you did that, that service still comes across as a help flow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just explaining some things we do to people, they look like, holy cow, I didn't know that. Why didn't somebody tell me that? Right. I didn't know this and I didn't know that. And they're right. appreciative of that. Then why don't you have more deals? That's a good question. I mean, if you have all this other stuff going, why don't you have more deals? I'm not going to answer that because that's the podcast. Well, you can answer it. I mean, if you have an answer. Well, what what I thought of when you said that was uh, when you get in there and you talk to somebody, you explain you could do this, you could do that. We we buy houses on a lease and you rent and we pay your bill, all that stuff. That's still not their story. Right. That's your story. That's not like, hey, sweetheart, you want a Hamburg? You want eggs today? Soup? What do you need, baby? Right. You know, it's not that. Right. Where, how does that come in? Maybe, maybe the guys on the call or listening to this to this uh, podcast aren't talking enough to new sellers, and maybe they aren't doing that because they get tongue tied and don't know what to say, mm. or maybe they're too anxious about calling somebody because they might feel like a fool. Well, what if they ask something oh. I don't know how to answer? Oh. What if they ask something that I don't know about? Oh. What do I do then? Oh. No, it's not even that I feel bad for myself. Poor but, little but baby. No, it's not even that. But Poor what do I don't baby. know what to say? Oh, your your ego might get a strike. Too, no, right? it's not even my ego. I just oh. don't know what to say. Oh, <laughs> Poor little Peter. No, seriously, Bill. Sometimes we just don't know what to say. Mm. In spite of all that, good, bad, or that, we just don't know <laughs> what to do. Like, oh. <laughs> my advice. Change your words, and you can dramatically improve your income. In other words, change your words and change your life. Hmm. So people think when they listen to us and support tickets and feedback and seminars and internships and all these one-on-one things that I do, they always get to the end of one of my training, and they very often say, God, you really help a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. 
right? I get that mm-hmm. a lot. Oh, you yeah. know, the one-on-one. I mean, I've been yeah. uh, I've been recently doing some um, some uh, one-on-one interviews, you know, because I did the internship and I mm-hmm. spoke to every. There was thirty people in the internship. You know, half of them were my coaching clients, but the other half I had to speak to because I was part of the internship. As I talked to them one-on-one, yeah. After the month-long thing was over, and find out what their plan is. Yeah, like consulting them for what they're gonna do. And, and I'm bragging on myself, but it's like uh, amazing the amount of appreciation I get because of the one-on-one help I give them while they're learning my materials. Mm-hmm. Because I know that you have to, you have to actually do it to learn it. Yeah, there's no other way to learn it. You have mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Right? So, um, it, it's really important to me that uh, I get that feedback, right? And, and it's amazing to me how many people, um, take a long time to figure out, a long time to figure out that their words could change their life. Right, mm. I mean, it's just it's just how it is. Right? Well, isn't that is that common knowledge for sales type people? Do they do they know that sales people? Well, the good ones do. Right. So if only the good ones do, and most of us aren't really salesman types. Right. So we're like two steps removed from knowing about that or appreciating it. Right. Until you're in it long enough to go, damn it, maybe I really do have to do that part too. Right. I am going to, uh, matter of fact, Emma, can you go on my computer and get the name of that site uh, that I have for recording, Vu, 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 whatever it is, and give me that. I forgot to write it down. I'm going to offer my podcast listener something today that is going to blow them away. I think it's going to blow them away. Mm. I did it in an email, and I got a lot of response back from it. So I'm going to do something that is ridiculously ridiculously helpful and you don't need a wallet mm-hmm. matter of fact I won't even ask for your name and email address wow that's so, bold yeah so to continue here the main difference between a high powered in a uh, high powered investor I guess you would call me that Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I mm-hmm. think I have improvement to make. Well, compared to a lot of us, it, it fits. And those that aren't so good. Yeah. Right? So that what's the difference between me and the one that doesn't do so good? All right. right? And here it is. Ready? One sentence, two, four, five words. Oh. The power of organized words. That's the difference. You may not think this, but we all have scripts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The question is, are yours written down and practiced, or are they unwritten and not practiced? And you probably don't even know you're doing it. Right. It's just what automatically comes out of your mouth. By the way, all a script is, is a collection of organized words that have the correct impact. That's all a script is. Mm-hmm. And when you use an unwritten, unpracticed words, when you use unwritten and unpracticed words that are not usually organized, you get weird responses. Mm. And this is not some like theory I'm going over here. This is 1,000, 1,000% or more observation on my part. Because if you're in my coaching group, and you're not closing. Mm. You're not getting deals. I get totally interested. And the way I start is I make sure my coaching client is recording conversations with the seller. Mm-hmm. Because that's where it's at. Yeah, That's where the rubber meets the road. Right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I have to fire my coaching clients because I can't get their way of thinking to change. And it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will take me months to get somebody's way of thinking to change. 
Oh, yeah. And it's not even like I have an, uh, an opposite or an odd way of thinking. It just, we were talking about it before the show today. The perfect way to explain this is undercover boss. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. If you do not know what your, the person that's going to pay you is going through, mm -hmm. whether that be a client or whether that be your seller, they're paying you. And if you cannot go through their experience while, while, uh, traveling your path of progress, in other words, receiving your services, mm -hmm. okay, then you haven't nailed it. You haven't nailed it. Yeah. So some of my students, uh, have not been through a deal yet. Some of my students have not heard a, a motivated seller yet. So that's kind of like studying about tractors and never seeing a tractor. Sure. Right? There's no, uh, there's no, uh, physical mass there. There's no, like, I never saw one. So how could I talk about it? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this would be like talking to me about outer space. You know, I know that there's a sun, I know there's a moon, you know, I know that there's Mars and Pluto, yep. I think Venus and Earth, that's as, that's my extent of outer space. Yeah, but that's, complete, that's, it's still theoretical. Yeah, I'm a you know, complete except Earth, you, can go out, you can go outside and see Earth and you can see the sun and right. some moon and that's it. And, and, I, and, I, and I just, because, because of just what you're saying, because I couldn't physically see it, I have trouble comprehending that stuff. Right. Yeah. Do you realize we didn't see really see Earth until our guys landed on the moon, turned yeah. around, took a picture of it? Yeah. Like, oh, damn, it is round. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, until that moment, it didn't really. Is that 1969, right? Yeah. Yeah. Round July. Yeah. Yeah. So the words you use determine the responses you get. That's what I'm babbling about right now. Mm-hmm. And the responses you get determine how you make your deals. Now, somebody will be listening to this podcast, driving down the road, and think, oh, yeah, that makes sense, and not write it down or not dwell on this. I am telling you right now, wherever you are listening to this podcast, you should pause it. I'm going to read it again, mm -hmm. and you should write it down. Because I'm telling you, if you obsess on this sentence, if you obsess on this sentence or these couple of sentences, mm. I promise you everything I own, I will, I will, I will put on the line mm. <laughs> that your life will change. Mm. The words you, I'm going to repeat it again. Okay. Yeah. So the words you use determine the responses you get. And the responses you get determine how you make your deals. You need to obsess on this. You need to like think of nothing else. If you just listen to this one paragraph out of 189 podcasts, <laughs> you would do deals. The words you use determine the responses you get. And the responses you get determine how you make your deals. Or, just to be general about it, your words determine what you get in life. Yeah. Now, I am telling you this after listening to many, many, I have not counted, but many, 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 many recordings of coaching clients. And I, and I, and I do this on the coaching call recently because this is so important. When the, coaching client doesn't know what to say most often they are not listening to the seller but thinking about what they mm -hmm. got to say next mm -hmm. the call will go good to a certain point and then they they either don't query a response mm -hmm. you know because they don't realize that it's an out point yep or they ask, they completely derail the communication by asking some freaky question. Hmm. So, 
So because let, they didn't understand. Yeah, that, really well, they don't understand the importance of it. So let's let's yeah. let's do a little bit of role playing. You and I see if I could actually do this. Sure. So Peter, how many bedrooms does your house have? Uh, it's got three. How about bathrooms? One and a half. About how big? How about about uh, one and a half baths? So that's good. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. About how many square feet is it? Who? Fifteen hundred, maybe. Okay, that's close enough. Yeah. And about how big is the acreage? Is it like half acre, quarter acre? It's it's like a regular lot. So what's that? A quarter acre? Just yeah. a regular, you know? Totally. S- small, just regular. Not small, but just regular. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what side of town is it on? I'm on the west end. The west end. Yeah. Okay. And isn't that where like Zuku's restaurant is? Yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah, I've I've eaten there quite a bit. My wife and I really like that. Place. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get there sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is that the type of restaurant that you like to go to? Uh, my wife does. Yeah. And it's okay with me. She likes it a lot. Yeah. Good. And uh, I know the owner over there. Get out of here. Yeah, he's a pretty good guy. Yeah. Uh, Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, see what I mean? Yeah. It's like, what happened there? Mm-hmm. Th- but that can't be important. That's not about real estate. That's not about buying the house. What's that but, for? But people do that to build <laughs> rapport, so they think. Uh-huh. So they think. So they think. I mean, it's it's good to like, you know. I mean, why did you ask the question? It derailed. Like, what side of town is that on? Mm-hmm. Like, didn't I look it up before I like called you? Yeah, I almost asked you. Like, does that matter, or why are you asking? I almost asked that. Right. But I was just trying. I'm just playing along with you. Right. So, so let's let's do it the correct way. So so that was wrong because it was just you diverted. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to build rapport. Yeah. But why that way? That, that's way too much. Let, let's let's do it the right way now. So, Peter, how many bedrooms does your house have? Uh, uh, three. Good. About how many bathrooms? Uh, one, one and a half. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and about how many square feet? I think it's like somewhere around fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Oh, that's pretty big. Hmm. Yeah, and about how about how about how many acres does it have? Oh, not acres. It's just a regular like house lot. You know, probably a quarter, a half acre. Maybe quarter. So it's like, you know, 70 feet in the front, 100 to the back, whatever that is. Right. Kind of usual. Cool. And um, does it uh, have, uh, what kind of heat does it have? Uh, gas. Gas. Okay, good. Gas. And um, I'm kind of going off. So I don't have my script in yeah, front of me. You just pulled so it out. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, it, it, this doesn't even have it, but... Yeah. Um, Usually I do the I use the uh, prospect suspect form and I'm trying to, to recall get all, it to get all those it. details. Yeah. So um, is it listed with a realtor? No. No. No, not yet. Okay, good. No. Doesn't need any repairs. Um, I mean, nothing's like the roof is okay, the furnace is okay, the heating, you know, all that stuff is okay. Um, my kitchen is old, it's right. things like that. And so the, it's just know. dated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But is there somebody living in it? Yeah, we still live there. So it's occupied by you. Yeah. Good. So let me ask you something. Yeah. Um. When did you When did you want to move by? Uh by the summer. Okay. So we're in February now. So you're thinking six months away. Uh. Well, see, my kids are in school, so I want them to finish the year in school. I see. That's why. So like, middle June. So not completely six, but middle June, and then, uh, it's okay to go then. Good. So if I look at the house and we decide that we make a deal. Mm. Uh, I just want you to know we could do like paperwork in the next few weeks mm-hmm. and like do the deal and then you can move when you're ready. Is you that can. something you, you think you could do? do? Well, if we do the deal, you don't, have to, you don't have to take over right away? No, I could take it over when we're ready. I, I'll need to do an inspection when you move and we'll need to do some preliminary stuff, but we'll do that a few weeks before you get ready. But really? the good thing is, is that, that I, you can do the deal now and not have to worry about it. Because you got enough to worry about. You got to worry about the, getting the kids out of school and no, getting you, into you a know, new place and all that kind of stuff. What you're saying is good because I'm thinking if I sell this, I got to get out. And I've, I've been hesitating. My problem has been I want to sell the house, but I don't want to put it on the market too soon. If right. somebody wants it, and then I got to th- pull the kids out of school. What do we live in a motel? Exactly. If I wait too late, then I don't sell in time. Then I'm here till the winter. So if you do that, that would uh, that would help me. Plus, plus knowing that your house is sold. Yeah. You can go look for your new place, and you can concentrate on that. Wow. You can do that. Yeah. All right. I like that. Okay, so now my question is this, end, end of role play. Did you feel like I was building rapport with you? Yeah, because it wasn't just about the house. Um, you you're, you found out. I, I spit it out a little bit. You could have pulled it out of me anyways, but just to save time, I kind of spit it out. 
that I have a reason. I have a, th- a thing I'm trying to do. Right. And you lined up what you do to show me that it could be done, arranged now, done then, really convenient for me without worrying. That was how it was helpful. So we're way off my little, my little, uh, your, you, I guess your, this is my script. Your podcast script. script yes. <laughs> um, but I'd like to make a one last point before we move on. Uh-huh. And this, I, I had no idea that this occurs. Oh. None whatsoever. And you were the first to bring it up. Actually, not the first, but you were the one to articulate it the most. Really? What did I do? And uh, when I go into houses with my clients, which I do once in a while, my coaching clients, every once in a while I go into a house, like two weeks ago I went into a house with a client. Yeah. I always get this. Man, I didn't realize how easy it is and how conversational your offers are. Mm. Yeah. And that, so you, you brought it to my attention that there's some thought process that there's like some rigid way of delivering the presentation. Well, my thought was putting myself in, you know, other students, my own shoes, clients, your, your coaching students, and hearing them on the phone when they, after they hear you do a presentation and me watching yours. Who does real estate? Realtors, lawyers, banks. Everybody's got goddamn suits on and it's, you know, just serious. You know, it's like just their job. So it's very serious and businesslike. And what we do isn't and what you do definitely isn't. Well, I'm more serious than they are, but I don't make it feel that way. Yeah. You know, serious and good, like you really want to get the thing done, but not just it's business. Answer this question, answer that question. Just answer my questions kind of thing. Do you want to know why? Yes. There's a big difference there. That's a cataclysm mm. between us. Mm-hmm. Because they're representing the seller and collecting fees, so they have to put on the show for the seller. Mm-hmm. The part of the mafia, Bill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Episode number 90. <laughs> Don't deal with the real estate mafia, right? Yeah, but it really is that way. It's like this whole system that's all organized, and everybody has their step to do, and they do the step, and they, did, they, did, and they pass it on to the next guy. Me? I'm the buyer. Well, you're all the steps in a way. I, I, I'm the one that everybody's looking for. I'm the buyer. I'm the guy that's going to pull the trigger and say, yes, I'll do this. Mm-hmm. End of story. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a little bit like we're the, we're the rebels. Right. Really working together, you know, at the, the kitchen table, the couch, just helping each other out. Correct. So high quality and helpful words in real estate investing helps create high quality and very, very successful deals. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, I've seen them. So like when we were just doing our little role playing there, which, by the way, is very natural because we didn't, we didn't, you had no idea we were going to do that. It was very natural, right? No, I don't know. And I can't read your scripts. It's too far away and upside down. Yeah. <laughs> has, has a very, 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 very important lesson to learn. So the first thing I want people to walk away with in this podcast is the words you use Determine the responses you get. So the reason for the role play is, is what, what words that I use to get the responses? Mm-hmm. As opposed to the first one that was wrong where we started talking about restaurants and building rapport. Mm. So the difference between the two of them is the responses I got with the first one about owning, knowing the restaurant owner and all that. Yep. What good are those responses? Are they going to help me with the deal? No, that's the total difference. It's it's nice and cute and stuff, but that's not what. The, it's like you're in the restaurant and so, oh, that's a nice jacket. Oh, right. Where do you live? Like I'm hungry. Right. You know what? What does the person really need? What they're looking for? It doesn't answer so you want to keep your questions. You want to keep your focus on the results. Mm. Now, hear me loud and clear. The only thing your seller wants from you, the only thing, the only thing that your seller wants from you is an offer. Yep. Or two or three. Mm -hmm. They don't know they can get two or three, but they want at least one. 
Yeah. At first, they, they, want, they want one that they like. <laughs> right. Well, at first, they want an offer. Yeah. When they start talking to you, if you promise them three offers, they'll be like, huh, you mean I can choose? Yeah, they're going to think there's three different numbers. They don't. They don't even realize right. the terms and the timing and how much and the details. They don't get that. And all they're doing in a primitive type of a way, the seller is just pre-qualifying you hmm. to see if you align with what their plans are. Yeah. Will you help them execute their plans? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them don't even think somebody would even be trying. Right. They'd just be thinking that somebody's going to throw a number at them. Right. Like on the other end, when we rent to own, mm -hmm. people are, I can rent to own? I just not rent? They, they, they don't even know. Blows them away. So what you just said is huge to me because last night I just signed lease option paperwork for a house that I bought a couple weeks ago subject to. Mm, yeah. Okay. With a buyer. Found mm -hmm. the buyer? I found the buyer. Good. Right? So. Go, Bill, go. Yeah. So, all I did is advertise this house on Facebook Marketplace. Hmm. I test it. It's a new, it's a new, it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I want to make it simple because normally I do more than that. You just, Emma, just Marketplace? Yeah. Nothing really? else no on the internet. Okay. Emma and I put out eight signs. They lasted a week. The town took them down. <laughs> we put out a second set of eight signs, and they lasted about 10 days. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. I got probably, I don't know how many people went through a house. We haven't counted yet. Yeah. But I got about six or seven applications. Nice. Okay. Here's my point in the conversation right now. Now that the deal is done... And I have uh, a majority of their money because they have to get a little bit more. And I have all the leases signed and the options and the move-in forms and all that stuff signed. Mm. They proceed to tell me about how they thought it was a scam. <laughs> really? Up in, yeah? Tell me. Up way. until what point do they go, oh, it's real? They, they're gonna yeah. they told me exactly yeah. when, too. Yeah, I want to know that. So it's like. on Facebook. <laughs> so they're messaging me, right? And they're and they're and, and I'm answering them back because I have it on my phone and I'm pretty good with that stuff. You know, I yeah. kind of make sure I pay attention to that while I'm doing it for the week or ten days. I'm selling a house, right? Yeah, yeah. And I don't show the houses. I send them to the house. What do you mean on on, on Facebook? I don't know. I don't Where? show the house. Oh yeah, I mean physically show like the real. Right. Okay, like the real. So thing. I send them there, and there's a phone number on the front door, and it gives them the lockbox code. And they go in the vacant house and they look at it. And I've, and I've had so many skeptical people tell me, you can't do that. Well, I've been doing it for 18 years. The house is a little heavy to pick up and take home. And they're worried about stealing pipes and all that kind of stuff. Truth of the matter is, is that I, I technically have all the phone numbers of everybody that went in the house. Yeah. So I give the cops, if I have a problem, a list of the phone numbers and there you go. But I never see that happen with you. It's never happened. Never happened with the ones I had. So they got there. And they try to open the lockbox, and it doesn't open. And they're uh, like, oh, yeah, this is a scam. Uh, oh, man. Because we can't get the lockbox open. So the girl sends me a message, a messenger, we're here and can't get the lockbox open. Yeah. And I answered her almost immediately. Here's what you do. Yeah. But it's not working. Did you try this? Yeah, it's not working. Hmm. I said, the door is on the front of the lockbox, not on the bottom. Oh, a few minutes later, because they, they thought again? that what? the door's on the front of the lockbox to open the little door to get the oh, key yeah. out. on the box. I'm sorry, not the house door, the little, yeah. the little thing, yeah. She told me last night that was the exact point. She said to him, this is real. Yeah. yeah this guy's lock boxes. this person's <laughs> answering me like, like, like we're at the front door and they're answering me. This is not some robot. This is not a scam. Yeah. But what, if, but what if they didn't like text you like hey it's not right. what if they just turned around and left and people do that because I I have trouble we all have trouble with lock boxes sometimes they're right. pain in the neck they they stick and things like that the point is is that she said and I said to her what uh, initiated this conversation was boy aren't you glad you answered my ad yeah because I don't have a ton of these how many people are you are you gonna meet in your lifetime that will give you an opportunity they're like we still can't believe we found this. Yeah. 
How many people are going to allow us to live in a house and get a house that they they do not qualify for a house? They do not. Yep. And they're getting they got two little kids. Mm-hmm. He was a troublemaker, and five years ago cleaned up his life, and has been clean for five years. I did all my background checks. I did everything so I can see the history. Yeah. And I'm going to take a shot with them because they're like they're like legitimately they're married. Yep. You know, she just got a job at the post office. They're like legitimately starting their life over. They like cleaned up all the crap, yeah. and for five years they've been working and doing their thing, and they feel privileged that they found this house. Well, you know. They earned it, too, in a way, didn't yeah. they? They said, we got to straighten our act out. And then uh, the universe, karma, right, and you. And when I got their application first, I, I didn't even finish reading it. I threw it in the pile and said, no. Really? She was persistent, kept texting me. I kept, I kept doing exactly what I'm telling you to do right now. The words you use determine the responses you get. So This is uh, huge, Peter. This is huge. And I'm spending way too much time on this, but I want to make sure that I get this understood yeah okay let me give you another one let me give you another example do, just quick, do you have scripts for for that too when you the application part no. all those okay. let me give me let me give you a perfect example mm. ready mm -hmm. here we go how much you owe on the house what okay do you get it see see, see the words i use elicited or pulled out our response yeah like what are you asking me that for Okay. Now watch this. Same question. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we uh, let me let me get the. A lot of times it works out best if we do yeah. something with the financing. That one. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of times it works out best by doing something with the financing. You have a mortgage in the house, right? Uh, yeah. Good. How much is it? Yeah. Good. See, see now. It's hard to not answer See, the because... difference. The difference between those two questions, like how much do you owe on your mortgage? Yeah, mind your business. Creates a ridge or like a stop or like a barrier. Yeah. It's a lack of understanding. Like, well, if you're going to buy the house, what difference does it make right. with the mortgages? You pay for the house, it pays the mortgage, and we move on. What's the difference? Right. Why are you asking me that? Right. Maybe it's a scam. So the words you use mm -hmm. actually determine the responses you get yeah okay so now let's but just you finish also the give, sentence you also give them a benefit from that sometimes it works out best right. so if there's something better if they answer the question it'll help them in some way so now totally. even if they know what it is they'll be like well let me see what this where does this go how does it help me but, so now let's let's talk about the two different ways it can go and then we're going to carry on because this is not part of my my script I'm off script. Yeah, but that's a great example. Right. The thing will die right so there. The first question I ask, how much money do you owe on the mortgage, mm. is exactly what I'm talking about with my students when I listen to them on the recordings. Mm. It derails any affinity you had with that customer. Yeah. It derails any rapport you built up to that moment. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll never forget one of my relatives. I forgot who it was. I think it was my uncle, but I could be wrong. He said the word but erases everything you said prior to the word but. Oh, yeah. Peter, I'd like to have you work for me, but. but. Peter, I'd like, to, I'd like to partner with you, but. Yeah. It erases everything. Well, the word but technically means there's exceptions. Right. There's, you're not going to get something, right. uh, except not this, so, not so that. So this is like the word, but you're going along building rapport, and then you say, how much do you owe on the house? But So everything you just said prior to that just got erased, and you're like, you just set a new pace. You derailed the conversation. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, is the response you're going to give me is not going to be helpful to me making a deal with you. Mm-hmm. Because you just ridged, you you like. There's a barrier now between the two of us. You mm -hmm. built a you you started to build your brick wall overcoat. Yeah, the sales resistant uh, sales resistive uh, buyer. All of a What's sudden, it went from a conversation to oh, this guy's trying to do something. He's trying to get me over. He's trying, like you said, sales resistant. Yeah, defensive, something, defensive. something got triggered. There's it's like a tripwire. Mm-hmm. 
and the other 42 times that happened when they bought the car they bought the refrigerator they had the car fixed they bought the other house they got married they got divorced they got divorced they got married all those came, all kick in they all, they all came to present right? time like have you had this problem before oh my god years ago yeah Woo. okay so so i just i'm hammering this to death but it's so important because the words you use determine the responses you get okay and the responses you get determine how to make your deals. Mm. That's a perfect example. Now, if I say to you, a lot of times we do something with the financing. You have a mortgage in the house, right? Yeah. There's like three pieces to that that I can see. One presents that there's some possible benefit to them that are even they don't even know yet, but there's some possible benefit. So keep listening. And you have a mortgage on the house. Well, that's just something. Then right is like yes or no. Like right. yeah, now it's too late. He asked the and question. So let's finish the role play. So a lot of times yeah. we do something with the financing. You have a mortgage on the house, right? Yeah. How much is that? Uh, it's forty-three thousand. Cool. So how much do you pay monthly for that? Uh, fourteen hundred. Fourteen is, something. Is that with the taxes and insurance? Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Are there any other fees like HOA fees or no? You know fees that you know like uh, you, you borrowed money from a family member or something like that. Oh, um, no, I paid them off. No, it's just that. Okay, good. You know the uh, you know taxes. Yeah, it's all in there. Yeah. Now, what just happened? End of role play. What just happened is is the words I used determine the responses I got. The responses I got just helped me figure out my deal. Yeah, you know what the mortgage is. You know what the payment is. You know, if there's any other payments in there, surprise, I owe $20,000 more. So we talk about the four things that an investor should talk about when he's in the house is price, payment, how long, you know, the term, and then deposit if it comes up. Mm -hmm. So I could easily say, oh, so when I'm making my offer, I say, okay, Peter, so I'm going to, I'm going to pay you payments of $1,400 a month for the next 24 months until I can get you paid off. Okay. Mm -hmm. See what just happened? Because yeah. I asked, because I used the right words and got the right responses, I was able to give back the right or correct estimation of the offer. Yeah. You also know it could be maybe a subject to take the mortgage over. Right. It isn't free and clear, so we might not do that. Right. But you know what else you could do for one of the offers. Right. Just so now, now I've, I've hammered that to death. I think we get that. Now I'm going to move on to the second most important thing that you need to know about making offers. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is just as huge, so you should write this down as well. You ready? Yes. If you have more great answers than a prospect has questions, <laughs> the stress goes out of the job of take of talking to sellers, and your self confidence soars. Based on great answers. If you have more great answers than a prospect has questions, the stress goes out of the job of talking to sellers and your self-confidence soars. Are these great answers in the script too? Uh, the script, the script, there's different scripts, but yes. Mm-hmm. You could make your own great answers. Mm-hmm. All you need to do is talk to a few sellers, and after a while, you'll start to realize that there's answers you don't have readily available. Well, exactly. So it's not you really write them down, right. and then you go figure it out. You you, yeah. you can research them. You can you know ask people like me. You can at yeah. least at least minimally structure your own answer. So when you hear that, you flip the switch and you say blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like why are you asking that? just have a response that's right. that's not just for your benefit for, for their benefit that makes them happy that it'll show them that it's a good thing to answer because it'll help them right okay All right so why don't you flip that switch for me right now and say how do i know you're going to pay oh how yeah. do i know you're going to pay your monthly payment oh yeah so you're offering me the fourteen hundred dollars but how do i know you're going to pay that that's a good question let me put it this way do you agree with me that the only way I'm going to get paid is if I get my buyer to pay me? Yeah. So until that happens, there's no money in this deal for me. Do you get that? Yeah. So why would I jeopardize that relationship with you and not get paid? 
What do you do if they don't pay you? I pay it myself. Oh. And I get them out of there and I get somebody else. Oh, you can do that? I can. Well, like they're breaking their agreement or their contract? Yeah. See, what I do is I put owners of uh, owners of the property in the property. They're not renters. They own it. So they, they go in there with a with a down payment amount, not just a security deposit. And I'm not regulated under rental laws because they're not renting, even though they're renting. Mm. See, they have an option to purchase, so technically they own the house. Oh, they, they can own the house. They will own the house. So let me ask you this question. You have a mortgage, right? Yeah. So would you call your mortgage company up and say, my toilet's not working? Yeah, no. If it snowed tomorrow and you needed to have your driveway plowed, would you call your bank and say, I need to put a driveway plowed? Uh-uh. So my buyer is in that position. He's not calling me. He's not calling you. He's he more buyer than renter. the house. And wow. because he gave me a substantial amount of money, I'm going to put some of that money in escrow. So if he doesn't pay me, I can pay you. Oh, no and kidding. if there is damage, I can repair it. Oh, no kidding. And I've done this often. And believe me, it doesn't happen very often. Mm. But I do make sure that I have money from all my deals in some escrow account that's got a lot of dough in it. Mm-hmm. That if something goes wrong, I fix it. Oh. And I don't know anybody else that can make you an offer like that that's as strong as I am with this points. Okay. So end of role play. So uh, yeah, I mean, I felt, sati- I felt satisfied with the answers. switch. Mm-hmm. That's my organized words. Mm-hmm. Right? So if they say that, <clears throat> you say what you said. So here's what I get uh, good and odd for all the time is those answers. Mm. So the only reason why the student that's listening on this podcast right now is not making phone calls is because they have not made it a game in their own head. Their mindset is off. Oh, I like the way you put that. Make it a game. They haven't made it a game and their mindset is off. So the 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 rule right now is if you have more great answers than a prospect has questions, the stress goes out of the job of talking to sellers and your self-confidence soars. So the game that you should be playing in your head is not being anxious about talking to your seller. It should be, how many answers do I have for those questions? I like the way you put that and call it a game because this looks like problems for people. Right. Looks like problems, and I we've talked about this before. But I had an epiphany years ago that all the problems I had, I just did some training, did some things, or reorganized my my thought process, and I just re looked at them as games instead of problems. Right. And uh, it, they, they they look the same on paper, but it's your attitude, right? Right. Right. And if you look at everything as a problem, well. You're just messed up in the head, like a lot of us are. But if you can look at it as a game, like a challenge, like let me just see if I can figure this out and not worry if it comes your way. Right. Because when you solve those problems from the buyer or from the seller. Deals fall in your lap. Yeah. Because, folks, my two cents, Bill. I had a friend that worked at a big aerospace company. It's a friend of ours. Aerospace, space shuttles, spacesuits, you know, moon, moon landings and spacewalks. Those are friends of my engineers. And anytime there's a problem, it was a, a huge opportunity to make money by fixing it. Right. The computers would go down, damn it. And they call the company. The company would go, oh, boy, sure sorry that they got no, they're not working good. And they're like in the other end, Bill, Bill, Tommy, John, we got an opportunity to make half a million bucks. You know, right. it's a great opportunity. So when people present you with problems, I've seen this in a lot of different ways. A student, I can't do this. I don't understand this. I can't play this. I can't read that. And you go, oh, do this, do that. Oh, my God, that's great. Every time you solve a problem, you move ahead. Make more money or keep a client, make a new one. That's how you do business. Right. So don't worry about the problems and what happens wrong. Take it as an opportunity. Yes. Look for them. And if you can't answer it, I had to learn this years ago. If you can't answer it, don't worry. First, just keep listening. Ask a few questions. Just talk a little bit more. And if you can't sort it out, tell them. Well, you have to, you have to have more great answers than, than, than the, than the prospect has questions. The only way you do that is to talk to people. Mm. 
Okay. So even if you just tell somebody, I'm just practicing, <laughs> right? They'll let you do it. Well, you don't even have to tell them. That's, that's how I started. I just started making phone calls years ago to practice right. for when I get a good lead. I picked up the phone and called for sale by owners just to practice and got a lead. You remember right. that? Yeah, that's how we got started on the physical yeah. thing. And I was just practicing because I'm a musician. You practice before the show, folks. Right. So it's okay to practice with that in mind that you're not going to get a deal. Just go practice. Now, here's what happens. This is important to know. Because the difference between me and the guy that hasn't practiced and hasn't done it is the mindset. Because like you said, I make it a game. So when I talk to somebody, I'm thinking something like this. <laughs> Wonder if they're going to tell me something that I've never heard before. Yeah. Are you almost bored? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Just in hoping. Fact, in, fact, hoping. <laughs> in fact, I want to tell you something. Just to that point, <laughs> yeah. which is the, one of the reasons why I'm talking about this right now, uh-huh. is all day yesterday. Now, mind you, mind you, this deal I'm doing, they're, they're giving me $12,000 up front, and I have $750 a month positive cash flow. That's not a shoddy deal. No. Okay. Plus, I got back-end money, right? Oh, yeah. All day, I'm thinking, oh, I got to do that paperwork. <laughs> oh, I got to do that paperwork. <laughs> and thinking wow. about doing the hour in hour to hour and 15-minute presentation with all the paperwork mm. at 6 o'clock at night. Not that I was, like, dreading it, but I'm like, oh, I can't wait till it's over. I was bored. Yeah. And and what I did is I had to I had to I had to this is such a crude way to say this, but I had to play with myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that, you know, like no. derogatorily. I had to play with myself. Mm-hmm. So what did I do? I put a reward on the other side of the the appointment. So I texted my buddy around three o'clock, hey, think I'm gonna go to the smoke shop for dinner tonight. Should be there around seven, just just so you know. Mm-hmm. He texted me back, I think I'll meet you there. So I left at, you know, at, at 10 after 7, got my car, and I went to the smoke shop, and I got some dinner, and I stayed until 10 o'clock, which I don't normally do on a Wednesday night, but I did. That was your treat. And that was like, that's what got me through. Now, anybody else would so be excited as hell. So you that the $12,000, the $700 in the back end wasn't enough of a treat for you, huh? Right. <laughs> but done it too many times? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't disrespect it. Oh no, but you know, but it's like it's just it's just part of the usual. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah, you know, some, it's like it's yeah. like you it's like you playing playing your guitar for enter for for, for to entertain yourself. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? Because mm-hmm. you got a guitar in your hand all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean. The applause is much more fun. The yeah. smiles, the yeah. smiles, you know, the smiles yeah. and all that. The so show. in most cases, you can hardly wait when when you're young at this. In most cases, you can hardly wait. For the seller to raise a particular question because you know you have the answer. Right? So you're waiting for them to give you some question mm-hmm. because you're like, oh, I know how to answer that. Mm-hmm. And when you get to that point, it's when your checkbook will fill up. Is there any shortcut to that or what's the best way to get there? There is no shortcut. You just have to practice and experience. And Well, some of the scripts that I have, which we're going to go over before we leave here yeah. in about two minutes. Yeah, the only thought I came up with watching this over the years, working with your own students, is any time, take this as a rookie uh, tip, folks. We should start a new segment, rookie tips. Any time you hit something in this business that throws you, and don't miss it, you know that feeling you get like, eh, write it down in a notebook yeah. and fix it. Yeah. Because if you don't pay attention to it, you'll get two, three, four, five of those, and you get a bad feeling in the pit of your stomach, and you won't remember. You won't remember what gave you the the bad feeling, and you can't fix it now. Just write them down in the the please fix me notebook, whatever you want to call it. Come up with an answer, and everything that's a bad thing becomes a, a, a positive now. Just keep track of it and fix it. Totally correct. So once you pass this barrier of not having enough answers for the questions, hmm. Right, mm. you'll 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 uh, you'll start to seek prospects, mm. right, all the time, mm. 
In fact, you'll even look for the leads during the sale itself. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's an indicator for me. Like, like when you start asking for another lead from your presentation right now, mm. you've made it to another level. Like, hey, you know anybody else that's selling a house? Right. Yeah. And we've done that. Our, f our first deal that we did together came like that off of a random lead I had that wasn't so hot. It wasn't, then it never worked. We went back t at least once or twice after. But who cares? A, a, a beautiful one spun off it. Right. So now let's pull all the shades. And we didn't always ask. You didn't know. I, didn't, yeah. I never asked that question. I hadn't done enough to even. Yeah. No. No. But I mean, you didn't know, even always ask the question. Right. But that day you asked, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's pull the shades down in the room and shut the lights off and make it dark. Because there's always a dark side to everything. Truth is, if you aren't closing every seller you're talking to, your script or organized words can be better. Even me. Is it possible to sell to everyone? If, absolutely, especially yeah. if you pre-screen pre correctly. Yes, I'm thinking first you have to do the pre-screen, pre-qualifying. But, line, but, but that's, all, okay. that's all scripts. Yeah. So truth is, now, now pay attention to what I'm telling you here because this is a little play on words, right? If your opening caller is doing the right thing with the scripts and giving you the right closing calls, it's possible to close everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Mm it could be possible. Yeah. Or at least have a high percentage anyways. Mm -hmm. right. Well, your rate ratio is way higher than us average bears. Right. So truth is, if you aren't closing every seller you're talking to, your script or organized words could be better. So what does that tell you, Peter? Does it ever end? No. I mean, that's that's the joy of working with you, Bill. As soon as I think I have something figured out, there's something else to, to learn. In, in, it's another in, level. Yeah, it is. But... um. It's always like, wow, wish we had that last year. Right. Like, wow, why did we think of that? Right there at that moment, like the, the line of sometimes it works best if we do something with the financing. Right. We didn't have that for, I didn't have it for the first year or two right. here. And you, never, you didn't have it for all the years. And then that, that appeared. Right. We got worked out. So here's what I want to do to end off, which we're going to, we're going to uh, do something a little bit odd here. So, um, and what is the name of that website? Do you spell it? V. O. C. A. R. O. O. Thank you. So, um, if you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com, on the top right hand side, uh, there's links on the top right hand side. There's one that says contact us. Also, to the left of that link, there's one that says free stuff. So, in there, there is a for sale by owner script, which I'm going to kind of go through real quick for the next 15 or 20 minutes before we end off. But here is my promise to you, the listener. If you go to this website, Voc Vocaru, it's V like in Victor, O, C like in cat, A like in apple, R like in robot, O like an octopus, O like an octopus. So it's V O C A R O O. If you have a microphone on your computer, you can read the script and record it and send me in a support ticket the link so I can hear you actually reading the script or talking to somebody. More importantly, if you so have the balls, pardon my French ladies, but if you have the balls or the nerve to actually record a call with someone on Voo Crew, a real one, you can send me a support ticket and I will not spend a lot of time on it, but I will send you back some comments and a support ticket. Mm -hmm. Now, I get 500 bucks an hour to coach in most cases mm -hmm. privately. So that's a free $500 offer right there. And why does Crazy Bill do this? Because I really believe in this podcast that much. This podcast will make the biggest difference for most investors, but they won't realize it till after they get in the pool and start swimming. Oh. 
You know, you got to go to Cousins Vinny's house because he's got the pool. And then you got to like put your bathing suit on and you got to get ready. And then you actually get in the pool to realize how deep the water is and how warm it is. But there's a lot of preparation before you get there. Yeah. So, uh, bad example, but you get you get the point. So, uh, if you so dare, go download the Fizbo script. Go to Zillow.com. Find a house. Okay. At the top of Zillow.com, there's filters there. So, you want to go to for sale by owner. Don't do the foreclosed ones and all that. Just do for sale by owner. You know, do your medium price in your area. I do two plus bedrooms, one plus bathrooms, and I do just houses, condos, and townhouses. That's mm. what I do. It's at the top of Zillow. You doing two bedroom houses? Two plus, yeah. Yeah, but you would take a two. Because usually don't, you're like three. I'm just curious. That's because when I, you didn't hear the rest of what I said. See, Peter, you're, you're not practicing what I preach. Because of the condos and the townhouses. Because of the condos and the yeah. townhouses. That's yeah, because right. you can't separate that. It's all love. Yeah. That's why. That's why. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. So the point is, is that if you do that, then you will find when the house is, when you click on the house, if you scroll down, the owner's phone number will be on the bottom, underneath all the realtors and everything, the phone number will be on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So uh, we usually start off with texting, but in this particular case, you can use the script. Mm -hmm. You could do one of two things. You could either, you, you could call that person and record it on Crew. In other words, put your phone on speakerphone. Mm -hmm. uh, either your, your your office phone or your cell phone, put it on speaker and just record it on Crew and let me hear your conversation. And I will, I will make some comments on your call. Or if you're brand new and you're nervous about calling somebody, you could, uh, what I suggest you do, which I suggest all the time, uh, some listen, some don't. Is once you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com, top right hand, top right hand side, click on free stuff. It's the very first one for sale by owner script. I would print it and then I would hand write it ten times, so that you get it. Then I would read it a few times and then do the Vuku recording so I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know anybody. I don't know any podcast. I don't know any guru. I don't know anybody that's making you that offer right now. I'm telling you right now from my heart, I care about whether you do this correct or not. I really care. I'm going to use my own time and forfeit any coaching fees just so you can do this correct because if the, you get this point correct you'll completely understand this podcast and you will obsess about asking the right questions to get the right answers because you will make deals because mm -hmm. that is the only thing that is holding you back so i'm gonna i'm gonna read those two paragraphs again and then we're gonna go into the script mm -hmm. okay so the first paragraph is the words you use determine the responses you get that is huge. And the responses you get determine how you make your deals. Right. And then if you have more questions, uh, you have, you have more great answers than the prospect has questions, the stress goes out of the job of talking to sellers and your self confidence soars. Yeah. That's a, that's a biggie. Cause yeah. people have that problem. They don't, how am I ever going to get over that? Well, knowing what you're doing certainly helps. Right. So I want to clarify something with the scripts because there's a couple of my scripts out there floating around. Mm. So the original script that we were we were giving away started off with, hi, my name is blank, right? In my case, it would be Bill. Yours would be Pete. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. I'm catching on now. <laughs> I'm calling to see if you're open to a terms purchase for the house you have for sale. Now, I want to understand, I want you to understand that that is a phenomenal script for this reason. The reason why you're bringing up the word terms purchase is because most of these for sale by owners are getting barraged with realtors calling them, asking them if their house is for sale and they don't want to hear that. Yep. So you need to throw a confusing statement out there. So they're like, what are you talking about? Mm. It, it, it's like it breaks the normal, is your house for sale? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's hi. My name is Bill. I'm calling to see if you're open to a terms purchase for the house you have for sale. And they'll always say, what's a terms deal? Mm -hmm. Right. And then you say, which is on the script, basically what happens is you sell your house now without fees as is for a fair price. 
and on the date of your choice, and we actually make payments so you can cover your expenses until we get you paid in full so you can move on with your life. Would that work for you? Mm. Now, nowadays, we have a script that I haven't released yet, but nowadays, I would say that wouldn't work for you, would it? Yeah, that is so amazing. It's just so weird. So I'm going to read that one again. So basically what happens is you sell your house now without fees as is for a fair price and on the date of your choice. And we actually make payments so you can cover your expenses until we get you paid in full so you can move on with your life. That wouldn't work for you, would it? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. The newer script, which I think is what you would download now, is actually a what we call the yellow letter script, right? Not because of yellow letter, it's because the yellow letter works so well. In the mail, we decided to use it in the script. So yeah. now it's, hi, my name is Bill. This is a completely different script now, which yeah. is on the website currently. Mm -hmm. If you want the other one with the terms deal, you're going to have to send me a support ticket. I'm going to have to send it to you because it's mm -hmm. not on the website anymore. Mm -hmm. right? So the newest script that you're going to get is, Hi, my name is Bill. I saw your ad about the house for sale. My partner and I would like to buy your house at 123 Main Street. Would you be interested in chatting about it for a few minutes? Mm-hmm. How's he going to say no to that one? Right. You told me you want to buy it. Right. Okay. So uh, it depends on the approach you want to take. It depends on your personality. It depends on what part of the country you're from. This is all, mm. you know, you'll have to decide which one. So let me read that one again. So the beginning is, is, hi, my name is Bill. I saw your ad about the house for sale. My partner and I would like to buy your house at 123 Main Street, whatever the advertised address is. Would you be interested in chatting about it for a few minutes? Hmm. And then they say, yeah, right? Yeah, and they go, honey, somebody wants to buy the house. You hear that. They're excited. They like this part. So you say, good. If you, if I, I give this again. Good. If we look at the house and like it, are you, so I have attention on what you just said. What? Have you actually heard that? Yes. Really? Yes. I've never heard that. No, I have. I don't have to make, no, I have. Like, hey, honey, like did somebody was, you know, somebody's calling about the house. They get excited. Okay. I'm just saying that because people think you're bothering them. No, they're trying to sell the house. Right. They they're happy for you to call. And they'll go, honey, somebody's calling about the house. Give me a minute. H hang on. Honey, put, turn, turn the vacuum off. Right. Yeah. So so you would respond with, you have a few minutes. You say, good. If we look at the house and like it and we're willing to pay you top dollar, would you be interested in a terms purchase? Mm. And then they say, what is a term biz terms purchase? You say basically what happens is you will sell the house now without fees as is for a higher price and on the date of your choice. Plus, we actually make payments so you can cover your expenses until we get you paid in full, allowing you to move on with your life. How does that sound? Or that wouldn't work for you, yeah, right. would it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. And then the script goes on from there. If they say no, because they don't want a terms purchase, yeah. you would respond with, uh, okay, sometimes people need all their cash right now. We usually buy from people who want to make more money from the sale and we can, uh, more money from the sale and can wait a little time to get paid in full. Is that possible? Could you wait a little bit for the money? Mm. Now, it sounds like you're repeating the question you just asked when they said no, mm. but ironically, they didn't understand it. So mm -hmm. you repeat it again, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and if they ask how much time, which they usually do, you say it's never less than two years. Mm. Now, we used to say, well, we do most of our deals for 30 years, but we'll do as little as five. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it works on right people but here it's just it's never less than two years nice and short and simple mm -hmm. at least you're getting them in a mindset you, you talk about the 30 years when you get in the house mm -hmm. i found that to do, be do they need to be explained why the two years as far as the buyers need time to get the credit do they need to know that no 
That'll come out later when you get more details. Yeah. See, this okay. is what happens with my coaching clients is, is that you start, they start, this is where, what I was talking about mm. before. So I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Okay. I'm going to read it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me get it out here. The words you use determine the responses you get. Mm-hmm. So if you say it's never less than two years, mm-hmm. they're going to say, I can't wait two years. You're done. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to learn more about that. Mm-hmm. And you go on to the next step. See, what most people don't realize is, is buying a house is done in sequential steps. And if you skip a step, it's too high of a gradient and it ruins the deal. Yeah. Right? So, so what happens is if they say no again, and this is all in a script, would you consider a lease purchase instead? Mm-hmm. So we've asked them three times. Because that's not really different, is it? No. I'm thinking, I'm not missing something here. Am I at if this they say the no again, <laughs> would you would you like a better explanation of how it works so you can understand it and make a better decision? So we ask them a fourth time. Yeah. Right? And then if they say no, the last ditch effort is going to be, so you're saying, if we don't get you full price in all cash, you won't sell? Mm. And then they can respond with, I do want all cash, but maybe I can do something on the price. I'm telling you, if you do that four or five minutes, just the way I just did it, Mm -hmm. you will know immediately what's going on. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing that I'd like to bring up about this script. Okay. So, when you say to them, would you be interested in a terms purchase? And you explain basically what happens is, is you sell your house now. Right, and they're curious. Here's what happens: the script goes over to another box to the right, and it says, "Not sure about terms purchase, or they want all cash." Mm -hmm. Either way, Mm -hmm. you would go to this portion of the script because we can buy the house all cash. We just got to do it at a deep discount. We're not telling them that yet, Mm -hmm. right? So, okay, what's your name? See. What is the property address? Now we say, what's the exact property address? Or Mm. you can say, I'm trying to look it up on the computer right now. Can you give me the exact property address? Yep. Okay. So what's your asking price? What's the estimated value? How many bedrooms and bathrooms does it have? How many square feet is it? What restaurant do you eat at? (laughs) So... Now, at this point, you can get seller contact information, right? So, what's your phone number? What's your email address? Mm-hmm. Right? You could skip that and come back to that. What kind of shape is the property house, the property in? Is it a pretty house or is it an ugly house? Now, you mm-hmm. can ask that question or you could just assume that by the way that they're asking it. The scripts that we have now that we're using that we're testing right now go in a little bit more detail about mm-hmm. that. But you're trying to find out if it needs repairs. You really need a renovation because that's not a cat. Well, that's not now, a Watch this. This is Peter's question, right? That's good. We buy a house in any condition. So you're asking, is it a pretty house or ugly house? You're Mm -hmm. trying to figure that out. That's good. We buy houses in any condition. Can I ask you what changed in life that caused you to want to sell now? Now, when I do it, I say, scan back, and like you said, scan back in your mind and tell me what happened when you decided you wanted to sell. It's another way of doing it, but it's a little bit more technical. Yeah, I just got the idea that somebody made a decision, and wherein lies the problem. Right. At a certain point in time when something happened. So just how you, you help. So what happened to you when I was a kid? Yeah, whatever. So if you can find out when they changed their mind, like what happened? Like, oh, my kid flunked out of college <laughs> and, right. and blah, whatever. Yeah. But you find out that way. So we're, so then it carries on with we are definitely interested in buying your house. You know, a lot of times it works out best by doing something with the financing. You have a mortgage on the house, right? There's that part again. And then you would go down to the box and say, you know, what's the first mortgage? What's the second mortgage? All that stuff is there. Mm -hmm. Unless it's free and clear. If they say no, then you say, great. We love to work with houses like yours a lot, which is true. Now, the way it normally works is that we buy your house from you now and we make monthly payments until we can get you paid in full. 
a few great things about how to do it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a few great things about how we do it is we pay a higher price. You don't pay any fees with us. We can close whenever you want and you can sell as is. Plus, we take care of everything so you, so you are not, so you are free from the house and you can move on with the next chapter in your life. You wouldn't consider taking monthly payments for your equity, would you? <laughs> There's that. The reluctant buyer? Yeah. Yeah. If they do have a mortgage, you would go first mortgage, the payment, is it current, yes or no? Uh, then if there's a second mortgage, you would do the same. Are there other any other expenses you have uh, on the property, yes or no? Are the taxes included in your payment, yes or no? What are the annual taxes? Are they current? Is the insurance included in the payments? Yes or no? How much is the uh, how much is the insurance cost annually? Um, is it current? Um, is are there HOA fees? And then whose name is on the deed? That's important. Mm -hmm. We used to ask that question up front because you want to make sure you're out, you're talking to the right person. Mm. Then if you get that far, right? Uh, I have to read this because I know what it says, but I want to make sure I don't mess it up. So, what is important, Bill? Huh? What is exactly. important, Bill? I can't see it. Oh, really? I don't have my glasses. If asking, uh, oh, if the asking dollars minus what is owed is less than thirty-five k, you would uh, use you. Uh, well, oh yeah, will you sell? And thank you, Emma. Will you sell for what you owe on? Yeah, it, those are the like. So if there's a thirty-five thousand dollars spread or less, mm. then you would ask, would you sell for what you owe on it? That's finding a subject to deal. It's right. exactly finding right. a subject to deal. Right. Right. Me, if you leave me to my own devices without a script, the first question I ask is, would you would you be willing to sell sell the house for what you owe on it? Mm -hmm. But you still know that I would start that first. But but I'm a subject to freaking maintenance. Right. But you don't ask that if the number is like really really high or really really low. Because I got balls. Really? Yeah, I ask oh. free and clear people that. A oh, free and clear? I ask, I, I will. Who sell the house for what you owe on it? The free and clear guys? Yeah. They don't know anything. Exactly. Jesus, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> but that's just because of the way I say it. But yeah. I'm not telling you to do that, right? Yeah. And I don't do that with anybody. He starts with a joke. No. What they'll do is they'll tell me, I, I don't know what I want. I don't know how much I want. Oh, good. Would you be willing to sell you for what you owe on it? <laughs> just to crack the ice. Just to crack the ice. That's something I would do too, yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know how much I want. Oh, good. So you'd be willing to sell for what you owe on it then. What? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, so you have some idea. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay, so that's what. Well, see, that's, that's going back and forth, comparing something to something and just tossing it back and forth. And then, and then just to finish up here, um, if the house is. <coughs> <coughs> I did good. Got all the way. You know we're in, yeah. Is the house listed with a real estate agent? Yes or no. Uh, is it vacant or occupied? And if it's occupied, is it the owner or a tenant? Uh, does the house need repairs? Yes or no. Uh, what do you estimate if the contractor would repair, uh, the contractor repair cost would be right. if you hired a contractor, get the dollar amount. And then, uh, when do you want to move by? Mm. And if it's, if there's a tenant in there and they're not in there, when do you want to sell by? Mm -hmm. And then you would make an appointment. And you would go out and see the house. So even if this this could be a, a renovation, even if it was a cash offer and needed a lot of renov a lot of renovating, it could be that because it could be anything. So here's what happened. Um, what happened was um, back when Naomi was around, which she's still around, but she's just not as active with us. She's uh, got too many apartments to manage, and she got overwhelmed. And she went to the Capitol yesterday to come to work on some professional real estate stuff. Oh, you saw that on Facebook? Uh, yeah, some Facebook thing. Yeah, she's she's jumping in. Yeah. So, my I point is, yeah, because uh, in New Haven they're changing a lot of the landlord laws, and she's really active with that. Mm. My point in bringing this up was what was happening was uh, she was actually we had an auto dialer, and she would dial four numbers at a time, and then when somebody answered, she would start the script, and then it would pause the other ones. And if they did dial, it would leave a message. Oh, I'm sorry. I was calling you because I want to know if your house is for sale. Um, but I just got interrupted with another phone call. Um, leave, you know, call back and leave me a message and I'll call you right back. Yep. Okay. And that worked. 
Mm -hmm. It was it was very uh, useful. What I found was is that if we just went after terms deals, because what happened was somehow or another I called somebody. I was I was checking on her or following up with somebody, and I found out that. Uh, by accident, completely, utterly, totally by accident, uh, undercover boss style. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some dude wanted to sell his house with a deep discount and she never asked that question in the script. Yeah, it just wasn't part of it. This was just finding pretty houses for terms deals, period. And I ended up buying the house, or you and I did. I don't remember the house, to be honest with you, but I remember we bought the house. Oh, that must, must have been Newington. Commonwealth. Yes, that's exactly right? what it was. Yes, I, I that's could, exactly what I, it was. I find it with signs. Yeah, you know, and uh, Naomi, you go because I, I was working yep. at the time. Go ahead, you guys are good with the deal. It's exactly the house, right? That's and right. it was a disaster in like no right. terms on this one. It needed renovating. And we bought it subject to the owe yeah. ninety four thousand. We put what thirty in. Yeah, and we sold for one ninety nine. Right, we did good on the house. Maybe forty in. But, I think. Uh, yeah, one ninety. But it it, yeah. it was a one eighty house with the renovation. We sold it for one ninety right. more than the, the comp because the, the renovation. The point that I'm making is is that I realize that we're giving up. So that's why we change when we change the script. So now, the right side of the script is to find out uh, if they're willing to take cash. You mm -hmm. know, at least get the information and get them talking and build rapport with them and you find out what's going on. Yeah, if they're not okay. going to do terms, they have to do cash. The only question is, what's the discount on that? So, if you talk to enough right. sellers, you got to know what to say. That's right. Mm. I'm sorry. Say that again. I wasn't paying well, attention. Well, it, 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 you either sell with terms or cash. There's only two right. ways, right? right? So the only thing is if they're selling, willing to sell at a reasonable discount. That's right. That's right. So mm -hmm. the words you use to determine the responses you get. The words you use determine the responses you get. The words you, you use determine, determine the responses, responses you, you get. get. And the responses you get determine how you make your deals. I am I am offering my services at five hundred dollars an hour, and I'm not even being like this is Raved. not some this is not some hype or something like that. I mean, try to get me on the phone with you, and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, you and I work together and try to get me on the phone with you and see mm -hmm. what happens. I even with you, I send you texts and emails, and yeah. you still don't see them. So sometimes, I show up sometimes, once, twice a week, and then sometimes, we, yeah. I bring my folder with all my stuff. And yeah. we go through things. And I'm, I'm very regimented with my calendar, so if you understand my calendar, then you know when to get me, when don't get me. My point is not to be a hot shot, because I don't mean to do that. It's just the way I live my life. More importantly, I am willing to listen to your script. If you go to Vocaro, V-O-C-A-R-O-O, V-O-C-A-R-O-O. Vocaro, that's probably it. <clears throat> you push the button. And you either read the script to me on how you would read it to your seller, or you 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 record your call, mm -hmm. and I will give you my uh, un uh, was unbiased, uh, uncensored, uncensored, uncensored oh boy. opinion. <laughs> Polite, uh, maybe. Well, they're just starting out, Bill. Take it easy on them. Just don't go I mean, too I, hard. I I, I started they're my just, coaching call last week with one of my guys telling him, your phone call sucked. <laughs> Am I not supposed to do that? You can do that per instructional policies and codes if you're very uh, realistic about it. You know what I just heard? Yes. I will show you the instructor's code later. So uh, have you? So let's let's just do this on the at the end here. Let's have a little fun. So oh, please, my, Peter, not at my expense, huh? Please, Peter. <laughs> please, Peter. Give me the definition of didactic. Oh, didactic. I don't know. You don't know? I it's thought for sure you would have known. No, that. I don't. I, you know, I've, I've, I've crossed that word. I think it's educational, but I don't use it. So I, I'm, I'm too weak at it to even guess good. So let me so give you the definition of didactic. Did you it's, look not, it up? I didn't. it's not my definition. It's, it's the Which dictionary definition. Yeah. Okay. It's teaching somebody something when they don't want to be taught. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So thank you for your didactic advice, Mr. What? Coca-Cola. What? <laughs> I will show you. Late number. I will show you. <laughs> A little didactic there. <laughs> I will show you later. All right. Please um, heed my advice today. This is not one of the more populated, uh, popular podcasts, I'm sure, because... We're populated. Yeah, populated, yeah. <laughs> uh, wrong word. No, it's, uh, it, it, it fits, yeah, though. <laughs> it, did, it did work. 
<laughs> uh, please take the time to listen to this podcast again. I know that we have uh, we were kind of off in the weeds for a little while, and I wanted to bring it back a little gradually. Um, we're going to start talking about this stuff more often because uh, we're past the first of the year and all the revved up, you know, Ray Ray. Get your head on straight. Get your head on. Get your head out of your ass stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. So you did. Uh, you know, the rah, rah, rah stuff. Uh, and let's get down to business the next few podcasts and uh, get some deal structuring going and uh, that kind of stuff. Okay. So um, record yourself, man. Let me hear it. Let's get you going. Let's make some deals, right? And if you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com, top of the page, it says courses. You can go there and go to advanced coaching. And if you want me to be a coach, you can fill out the application and I will call you personally. Okay, flippinghousesforrookies.com, top of the page. You go to courses and you see advanced coaching. It's the black one. Emma has uh, so skillfully made all the courses different colors, so, like, when it starts off with black, it stays black. And when it starts off with green, it stays green all the way through the whole course. Oh. So, you know that you're in different courses at different times. And she's very... Color coding. Uh, Good one, Emma. The word is adroitly. In other words, very skillfully has uh, done that for me. It's an amazing thing. Nice one. Okay. That's it, man. Oh, reviews. Give me reviews. Please go give me reviews. I'm not getting enough reviews. Go to iTunes and give me a review. Go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com forward slash podcast. There's a button on the right side. It's a big red button. Say give reviews. Please, please do that. Otherwise, I might lose interest in doing the podcast. And I don't know. Maybe you might want that. Maybe you don't want to listen to me anymore. But maybe you do. So please go give me a review. Even if you've given me one in the past, give me another. I like it. You can make me more than one offer. (laughs) Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.